Hello once again um, and welcome back to the Sterling Engine project. Um, it's getting a bit samey now. The last three times it's been this situation. So I've made a few changes since last time. I'll take you through those changes in a second um, and then I'm going to start the engine up and give it a go. So this is the regenerator enclosure. Um, I've just pulled out all the stainless steel scouring pads that I had in there. I'm going to try and improve this a little bit potentially so this all these scouring pads came out of here um, they're all in fairly good condition this one was the one closest to the, the hot side as you can see it's gone a bit um discolored with the heat um yeah I, I don't the problem is with this i don't really know how effective it was my my biggest worry which um um other people have uh, made me aware of is the the pumping losses with this um, which imagine are fairly high. Imagine what happens. That's stuck in there. Um, it would be quite a <coughs> quite a lot of force to push air through all that lot. I would have thought with the uh, with the resistances and that. So what I have made is this to replace it. Now this is an annular um, or meant to be an annular type uh, regenerator, uh, Robert Sterling inventor of the regenerator or the economizer use this kind of concept with annular passageways so this is made of many pieces i've made it in pieces because um i've got to be able to fit it all in this hole so that's why it's in many pieces um, as i understand there are also benefits of having it in many pieces because the heat um, finds it harder to transfer itself from one end to the other because the idea of this is to capture the heat um, when the gases are going from hot to cold and to put the heat back into the air as it's going back from cold to hot. Um, you don't want it to pass along the regenerator. You just want it to um, take the heat out the air and put it back again. So we'll give it a go and see what happens. Um, it's a bit tricky knowing whether it's going to be an improvement or not. Um, I haven't got any power reading uh, equipment set up to measure the power of the engine um so all we can all we can use is um is uh is sort of uh rules of thumbs and uh, like uh, visually uh visually see see if the engine's going better uh perhaps through the speed or uh, or how how much torque it takes to stop and those kind of stuff really there you go so there you go that's that lot in place one more thing I forgot to mention, these are actually made out of mould steel um, and not the usual stainless steel that people tend to go for. Um, this is a bit of an experiment actually, because I've had a few reports of uh, people using mould steel with quite good results. So we'll give this a go um, and it's cheaper as well. I had a few uh, leaks coming from uh, within the pistons. So the air is actually leaking up through here and out. Um, I've noticed that I, I filled them full of water and uh, checked for leaks. So uh, now they've been rolled up. So they're now all sealed up. So this is the new piston slide, which is made out of brass. Uh, this is the bottom slide. Um, this is actually solid. Um, somebody wrote in the comments uh, this might be a good, good idea, and I think he's probably right. So th this one is solid, and the ones on the top and sides I've got a short little spring so the spring pops in the hole like so and then they've got another little, little brass thingy and that will compress in like so try to get my camera to focus there we go so yeah so we go so that will that will give a nice even pressure against the side of the, the cylinder just to try and keep it central and stop it bouncing around making a noise. How long they will actual last, um, who's to say? But there's one way to find out, and that's to try it. So I've made some new leather um, support rings. These things here. So you can see the profile there. Now I'll, I'll try and explain why that is that shape. This is an old seal. I'm going to make some new seals before I refit it. But um, so that fits in there like that. So it actually supports the seal like that. The idea is um, when the uh, when the piston is traveling in this direction, 
um, this port is designed to support the lever so it doesn't all it doesn't bind in on itself and cause resistance um, so I've been a bit more careful with the shape this time um, and also this is a nice um, a nice fit on the piston now it's quite a nice fit now obviously wear in uh, this will be fully lubricated now with the uh, modifications another thing I've done is um, I've changed the shape of the uh, the hot heat exchanger a little bit when I when I made this the these areas here these like cheek plates that I welded in um, they did bul bulge out a fair bit you see there you see it's, it's bulged out like that the effect of that was there was quite a big space um, on the outside here uh, and my worry was that the um, all the hot gases were going to escape up through that space rather than actually going through the heat exchanger and pa and uh, giving up their heat. Uh, so what I've done is I've made these little pieces to go in there. I've just welded them in. Um, not the prettiest welding in the world, but it will keep it in place. Um, and once it's glowing red hot, I don't suppose it will really matter. I've also added these lubricators. Um, so I bought an old uh, or a new salt and pepper set. Um, I had a couple of these um, uh, these metering type valves. Um, I've drilled a hole for a uh, plumbing fitting there and made like a pointy kind of thing underneath. So when I open it up, it drips oil down through. And then that goes down this tube here and goes onto my piston. So hopefully that will improve lubrication somewhat. Okay, I've just had the engine running. Um, it was running quite well, but the fire is starting to die down now. Um, there was quite a lot of squeaking going on it. I'll just turn the microphone around a bit. Lots of squeaking. Now I don't know what all these noises are. They don't sound great. I wonder whether the brass is actually heated up and starting to actually become a bit soft and like grippy with the steel. I'm going to leave it run for 10 minutes to see if anything improves or not. Yeah, I'm, I'm listening to the noise here. It's only actually coming from the hot side. So I think it's the heat that's causing the brass to get a bit uh, bindy. Right, I think that's enough for now. I think I'm going to take the bits again and see what's happening with this brass. So I'll open the, uh, the stop valve now. I mean, it's not jammed as such, it's uh, fairly free to move. There's just lots of grinding going on. That's alright. It's all good experimenting. I get to see what's going on now. <laughs> there you go another test run done um uh, some positives and negatives from that run 
Um, positives, the, there's no knocking anymore, so that's gone. Um, the only negatives is um, I've got a, a lot of squeaking coming from what I'm assuming is the brass guides on the hot side. Um, so I'm going to have to rip it to bits again, unfortunately, to, to test to see what's going on there. Um, yeah, uh, I mean, the engine, to be fair, would seem to be running quite well. It was getting to the point where it was kind of over speeding, really. Um, I needed a good load on it to, um, to slow things down a bit. So, so that's, that's, that's one positive, I suppose. So I've removed the cylinder assembly once again to find out what the grinding is all about. So here we go. I'll pull, pull a piston out a minute. So there's lots of um, there's lots of brass dust everywhere. Oh, so uh, serving's intact. I'm oh, sorry, I get a bit high. Serving's intact. Um, but the only point problem is it was making out of a racket. So I'm, I'm looking at the faces of the beads. I'll try and focus the camera. There we go. So you can see, um, I see they've been, see there's like a divide on them. They've been wearing on one side. Um, I suspect what's been happening is it's been doing this sort of thing and pushing this aside and, and, and creating a, uh, a, like a chatter. It's chattering perhaps. Maybe that's what's happening. Because it's only worn on one side, it's obviously been pushing to one side. So it's been chattering. So they're not actually worn out as such. Um, there's just being a bit of uh, chattering going on. So there you go. That's, um, that's the fun for the day. Um, so there's only one problem left now that's stopping this engine actually running well, and that is the piston slides. Um, I'm not quite sure what to do at the moment. Um, I think the surface area needs to be increased somehow, um, and we need to stop them sort of binding up. Um, I'm, I don't know which is the way ahead. I'm going to do some research on the internet in a minute, see um, what I can come up with as far as slides go. Uh, there is one material that I haven't played around with yet, um, and that is something called uh, Peak. P E E K. Uh, Peak is a is like a high temperature plas a thermoplastic, um, a self lubricating um, plastic, um, and uh, it basically it's like the next level up oh, up from PTFE. Um, so so that might be a possibility because that will deal with the hot side quite a lot. Yeah, so I think that's about it. So I'll think about that, and um, I'll catch you next time. Bye bye.